like to start the unit on sedimentation today. We'll talk about sedimentation theory. We'll talk about the different types of sedimentation. Uh, we'll then go into sedimentation practice and then design. So when we're talking about sedimentation, the water's then flowing into these typically larger basin, often operated as a plug flow or nearly plug flow system. And the goal is that the water is almost devoid of turbulence. So we want to allow the, the flocks or the precipitated sludge, calcium carbonate or magnesium hydroxide to collect and settle at the bottom. And then the flock may flow into a hopper and then be mechanically or pumped, um, physically removed from the system. I've got a couple of YouTube videos. We'll actually look at those later on uh, in the semester, in the unit. So there's a number of types of sedimentation that we will talk about. They really have to do with how the particles interact with one another. So type one is what we refer to as settling as discrete particles. So these particles are not interacting with one another. So there's no flocculation during sedimentation. So if you can kind of think about if you mix sand and water and you allow that sand to settle, the sand just settles and it's not interacting with another particle. There's no particle growth during sedimentation. So this can occur if you have pre-sedimentation for sand removal uh, in a surface water treatment. I didn't draw that, but you could have pre-sedimentation before you even do the rapid mixing. In a filter bed, we, and you, we'll talk much more about this, but we'll talk about backwashing. So basically you pump water up through the filter, you fluidize the bed, that releases the particles and then you allow the sand to settle again. So as the sand particles settle, they're settling with by type one sedimentation. They're settling as discrete particles. In wastewater treatment, we typically will have what we refer to as a grit chamber. So we're removing predominantly inorganic material, kind of the size of coffee grinds. Uh, it's silt, coffee grinds, um, eggshells, particles that get put down the drain. And these need to be removed before subsequent treatment to protect your pumps. Um, and then in a quiet stream, sand particles will settle by type one sedimentation. So what we will do is we'll look at this discrete settling. So we have a drag force, we have buoyancy forces, and we have gra gravitational forces acting on these, par on these particles as they settle in this space. So we'll, as we look at this, we'll look at particles, we'll assume that they have a density of rho p for particle, a spherical volume of V, a mass M, and a cross-sectional area, and I'll actually add the P. We'll need to look at the coefficient of drag, and we'll also <clears throat> need to consider the density of the water. So we'll go through these equations, and basically when a particle reaches terminal settling velocity, that is the acceleration is zero, the various forces are balanced. So we have a balance between the force of gravity, okay, which is acting down, and buoyancy and the drag force. So when we have zero acceleration, as I mentioned, then what we have is the terminal settling velocity. It's the maximum settling velocity. If we have a spherical particle, and we will assume spherical particles, and that spherical particle has a diameter, we can write the terminal settling velocity in this form. Now, 
what we typically want is a laminar flow regime. So if we have laminar flow, we can, <clears throat> or we can use the Reynolds number here to describe the flow regime. If we have laminar flow, the coefficient of drag can be approximated as 24 divided by the Reynolds number if we have a spherical particle. And as I mentioned, we're only going to look at spherical particles. For the transition re re region between laminar flow and turbulent flow, the coefficient of drag is a more complicated equation shown here. And it's a function again of Reynolds number. Now, Reynolds number is to kind of review a little bit of fluids. It's defined as the ratio of the momentum forces to the viscous forces. And it consequently defines the relative importance of these two types of forces for given flow conditions. So for spherical particles and laminar flow, so we have here spherical particles and laminar flow, the terminal settling velocity is a function of gravitational acceleration, the difference in the density of your particle in water, the diameter of the particle squared, and the dynamic viscosity of the water. What we have is Stokes' law. If the flow regime is unknown, then we need to use the more accurate equation, which I gave previously. If the transitional, if you're in the transitional flow regime, so you're typically between a Reynolds number of, if you're in the transitional flow regime, so Reynolds number is between two and 500, then coefficient of drag is approximately equal to 18.5 divided by the Reynolds number to the 0.6 power. And we have this more complicated equation right here. So we have multiple equations that we can use for the settling velocity. For the most part, you will attempt to operate in a laminar flow. So the simpler equation should, should work. So let's look at an example here. So what we have is a rapid sand filter and that's backwashed. So you can think of your sand filter as basically a box. And that box is filled with, you know, with a gravel support shown in yellow. And on top of that, a sand. Now, during backwashing, what we do is we pump water upwards. Normally water is flowing down through the filter. We pump water upwards, causing the sand bed to expand. The level of water rises above that gravel support so that we'd have a level of water much higher. So the situation we have is we backwash this filter we have a sand particle <clears throat> of diameter 0.1 millimeters with a density of 2,644 2, kilograms per meter cubed. And it is 1.0 meters above <clears throat> the sand bed. And you're asked, how long does it take for the particles to settle for these particles that are one meter above, how long does it take for that particle to settle one meter to hit the gravel support? So we've got a particle up here during backwashing, and I'll be, and then we're looking at how long it takes to settle. How far back should I go? I'm sorry, I didn't notice the chat. Um, I was wondering about when you said the flow regime is unknown. If the flow regime yeah. is unknown, yeah. we need to use this equation 
for calculating the coefficient of Is that 24? That's 24. Okay. And then the R is Reynolds number, right? Reynolds number, yes. Okay. It's the same equation. It's actually written here. Oh, okay. If Stokes' law is written here only can be used for spherical particles and laminar flow. We're going to always assume the particles are spherical. The problem is, is we don't necessarily know if the flow is laminar. So if the flow is laminar and what Stokes' law uses is the simplified version. Of, it uses this equation here for the coefficient of drag. If we don't know... Okay, it, so Stokes is for... Spherical particles, laminar flow. Okay. So the, but the problem is, is if we don't know the coefficient of drag, then we're kind of stuck. And we'll go through a problem where we actually don't know the coefficient of drag. This will become extremely important in filtration when we look at filtration hydraulics, because filtration is entirely designed based on hydraulics. We we won't consider chemistry at all in filtration. It'll all be fluids. So this same approach with the coefficient of drag and Reynolds number we'll use again when we talk about filtration. So we have the situation here. We have this rapid fil sand filter. We're looking at the time that it takes for this particle to settle. You're told that the density of water, you've looked up the density of water at 22 degrees, is 997 kilograms per cubic meter. This density here is just because the specific gravity of the particle was originally stated as 2.65, and I just did the multiplication. So that's why it's kind of, that's why it's a, um, what may seem like a strange number. And then we have this dynamic viscosity and the kinematic viscosity, both at 22 degrees C. So let's assume, the first thing we'll do is we'll assume a spherical particle and laminar flow, because we like Stokes' law. We like the easy word. So we have gravitational acceleration, density of the particle minus the density of water times the density, I'm uh, sorry, times the diameter of the particle squared divided by 18 U. So V sub S is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared times 2644 kilograms per meter cubed minus density of water times the diameter of the particle, and we want to, we want, we need that in meters. This is 0.1 millimeters, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. And we will divide that by 18 times the viscosity, and that is 0 0.0094 meters per second. Let's check the Reynolds number, make sure that <clears throat> it was appropriate to have used this form of Stokes equation, Stokes law. So Reynolds number is equal to the diameter of the particle times the terminal settling velocity divided by the kinematic viscosity. And that is equal to one times 10 to the minus four 1 times 10 to the minus 4 meters times 0 0.0094 meters per second divided by the kinematic viscosity, and that is equal to 0.98. It's less than 1, so it's reasonable to have used the form of Stokes' law that we did. If this was not true, then what you need to do is you would estimate the Reynolds number. So basically it's an iterative process. You would actually 
you would first estimate the terminal settling velocity using Stokes' law. You then calculate R, and I didn't spell calculate, calculate R using the equation that I gave. You then calculate coefficient of drag, and then you calculate a new terminal settling velocity, and you continue to do that until it converges. So until the terminal settling velocity converges. So it becomes an iterative process. And we will actually have to do this when we move into filtration hydraulics. Time is equal to one meter divided by the terminal settling velocity. And that equals about 104 seconds or 1.8 minutes. So it takes roughly two minutes for that particle to settle. Any questions about this? As I mentioned, we will, we will use this approach extensively in filtration. And this is just a plot of Reynolds number um, and the co coefficient of drag and Reynolds number. And you can see here, if your Reynolds number is less than one, it's where we can estimate the Reynolds, sorry, the coefficient of drag of as 24 divided by R. And you can see how it deviates and we need the more complicated equation if we're in that transition zone here, if we're in this transition zone.